So, we look at practice problem in energy balance in this lecture. Let me first describe the problem to you, so that we understand what the situation is. We have here a stirred tank and um, it has a, a cooling coil okay all right the reaction a going to b and it's quite reversible so this is the kind of reaction taking place feed v not and then composition c a not coolant temperature t c then um, feed temperature T naught. Okay. These are this some data that is given is as follows C A naught equal to 1.66 K mole per cubic meter T naught is 21 C V naught 0.6 cubic meter per hour. Activation energy for reaction 1, this is 1 and this is 2, is 25,000 k cal per k mole. Okay. Coolant temperature T c is 10 c and heat transfer coefficient this is between coolant and reactants okay that's 1000 k cal per square meter per hour c so this is the data that we have okay now, some more data we would require because the reaction is reversible. Therefore, we need some equilibrium data, which is also available, which I will. So, we have T K 1 and capital K equilibrium constant 293, 1.06. 4 point three seven twenty one point three fifty seven point two twenty one point six six point nine six one point nine seven zero point eight nine. So, this data on reaction velocity constant and equilibrium constants are given. Okay. The question in front of us is the following. Now, that we, we this this is uh, where is heat of reaction, heat of reaction I have forgotten I just heat of reaction that is delta H yeah. heat of reaction is given as minus 20,000 ok A going to be this is for A going to be heat of reaction ok calories K cal per K mole ok. So, this is an a reversible reaction and plus it is exothermic. So, we know that if you have a reversible reaction which is exothermic, it has some interesting features showing that it has a maxima and reaction rate and so on which we have already you know discussed. So, let us look at the first part of the exercise is one is derive locus of max rates. Okay. What is the locus of max rates? How do you do this? So, suppose I say R b is the rate of formation this our reaction is A going to B. Okay. A goes to B and uh, this way this 1 and this is 2. So, R b is what? K 1 C A minus K 2 C B. Okay. Now, since there is no volume change I write this as C A naught times 1 minus of x minus k 2 c c b naught plus c a naught x 
and we take this at 0. So, essentially is k 1 c a 0 1 minus of x plus k 2 c a 0 x. Okay. Now, locus of maxima and rate is understood like this del x del r b del x at constant t. Okay. This is what we want to find out that means del r del x at constant t. So, del, sorry, del r I'm sorry, del r del t at constant sorry, I'm sorry this is or we want to know how the rate of formation of uh, component B uh, changes with temperature. Let us let us do that we we'll just go through that very elementary manipulations. So, we have R B equal to k 1 c a 0 times 1 minus of x minus of k 2 c a 0 x we want to find out del R B del t at constant x. So, we have to differentiate k 1 with respect to t that is k 1 e 1 by r t square at constant x therefore, we do not change this. Similarly, if we differentiate k 2 with respect to temperature we get k 2 e 2 divided by r t square c a 0 times x. Okay. Now, we have uh, shown that uh, an exothermic reversible reaction R b goes through a maxima. We have shown that earlier and therefore, at the point of maxima we should have this I will call this x as x m. So, 1 minus of x m divided by 1 minus of x m uh, multiplied by k 1 e 1 by R t squared C A 0 equal to k 2 e 2 by R t squared C A 0 times x m or x m divided by 1 minus of x m equal to x m divided by x m equal k 1 by k 2 e 1 by e 2 or some equilibrium constant times e 1 by e 2. This is something uh, that uh, we all know based on the elementary principles of differentiation. Now, suppose you look at the same reaction at equilibrium, same reaction at equilibrium, which is you have R B equal to k 1 C A 0 1 minus of x minus of k 2 C A 0 times x at equilibrium you have at at equilibrium equilibrium we have R B equal to 0. Therefore, we should have k 1 C A 0 1 minus of x e equal to k 2 C A 0 x e or x e divided by 1 minus of x e equal to k 1 divided by k 2 or it also means x e equal to if I call this as k you know equal to k x e equal to k by k plus 1. At equilibrium we have the equilibrium conversions given by k by k plus 1. Okay. Now, we also said that that x m by 1 minus x is equal to therefore, this also means x m equal to if I call this term as delta if I call this as delta this becomes that means, this is delta. Okay. So, becomes k delta divided by k delta plus 1. Okay. Is that clear? So, if we want to make a plot of if you want to make a plot of what happens what happens to x what happens to x for different t. In other words x e equal to k by k plus 1 okay, or it is also equal to 1 by 1 by 1 plus k. Okay. Now, for a for a reaction which is exothermic for an exothermic reaction we know that k decreases as t increases we know that this is a familiar Lee chart principle. Therefore, we have as 
k decreases st increases. So, when k decreases what happens to this denominator? This increases correct. So, as t increases you know that x keeps on decreasing. Therefore, the equilibrium if the if this is the equilibrium line. I hope you understand this. I will go through this once again. As t increases, k decreases for an exothermic reaction. We are talking about exothermic reaction. Exothermic okay. reactions. For exothermic reactions, as t increases, k increases. Okay. When k sorry, as t increases, k decreases, therefore, this quantity keeps on increasing. So, 1 plus the, the denominator keeps on increasing. Therefore, x c keeps on decreasing as t increases that is what I have drawn. Similarly, you have this x m which is given by k delta divided by 1 plus k delta okay. and, there, and this also can be written as 1 by 1 plus 1 by k delta. Okay. Therefore, the behavior of x m also will look something like this. This is x m. What is x m? x m by definition is the locus, this is the locus of locus of max rates and what max are we talking about? Del R B by del T at constant x. So, this is this is the locus we are talking about. Therefore, in our design by and large we would be interested in ensuring that the reaction rates that we attain in the equipment is as high as possible. So, what is the uh, rationale for this? I mean if the reaction rates are very large then clearly the equipment that is required to do that processing would be the smallest and therefore, it, it sort of uh, makes sense to have your process operating at the highest reaction rate. So, what we are saying now is that this is the first part of the question which says the, the question let me state the question once again. Question is this recall the first page where we did all this. We said that we have here we want this x it says specify best conditions required to get a conversion of x equal to 0.52. So, the problem that we would like to uh, address now is what are the best conditions that is required to get an outlet conversion x from reactor 1 equal to 0.52. So, this is the question. Okay. Now, how do we address this? We address this by recognizing. So, let us just state that question once again. We have we have a stirred tank, okay. we have a coil, okay. this is a coil coming in and going out fluid is coming in, fluid is going out. Okay. Now, we want this x to be 0 0.52 number 1. Number 2, we also want that the, the reaction rates chosen here be the highest or uh, the size of the equipment for this choice should be the smallest. That means, we want to, um, to get the highest reaction rate or the optimum, optimum conditions optimum conditions to achieve to achieve x equal to 0.52 okay what are the optimum conditions to achieve x equal to 0.5 now we said xm divided by 1 minus of xm equal to 1 by 1 plus k delta that means the choice of the conditions should be such that the, this condition be satisfied. Now, if I put x m as 0 0.52 by 1 minus of 0 0.4, 0 0.52 equal to 1 by 1 plus 1 by k delta, essentially this equation defines what should be the value of k capital K or equilibrium constant at which I should operate the process. Okay. Now, you can solve this and then find the value of capital K that gives you the that satisfies this inequality. Okay. Now, to be able to do that, to be able to do that, what is it that we require? To be able to do that, delta 
the way we have defined delta is e 1 by e 2, which means that if this is the so, if this is the reactants, okay, these are reactants, these are products, okay, and now this is given as heat of reaction, heat of reaction is given as how much is the heat of reaction? Heat of reaction is given as 20,000. So, this is 20,000 or 20,000 calories sorry 20,000 calories per mole it is given. Uh, what is this? This is E 1 and this is this is E 2. Okay. Therefore, E 1 minus of E 2 equal to delta H. Okay. This is given as this is equal to 20,000. Okay this is what is given i'm sorry what i wrote was not right okay e1 minus e2 is and e1 is given as e1 in the problem statement is given as 25000 minus of e2 equal to this exothermic heat of reactions minus 20000 okay therefore e2 equal to 45000 calories per mole what are we saying? What are we saying is that in the problem that is specified in front of us, the actuation energy for the forward reaction is given as 20,000 and the heat of reaction is also given as uh, 20,000, but it is exothermic. So, I put all those conditions here and we find E 2 which turns out to be 45,000. So, we, we have in this reaction that E 1 is 20,000, E 2 is 45,000. Therefore, delta. So, what is delta equal to? 20. 25,000 divided by 45,000. So, this is the heat of reaction which is 5 by 9 correct that is equal to 0.5 about 0.55. So, that is delta value. Okay. So, we recognize we recognize that to be able to so, what we are saying is what we are saying is the following that our process our process runs in such should run in such a way that the exit conversion should be 0.52 for which you have to appropriately take care of the heat load using this device the heat removal system. So, what we are saying is that that if k delta. So, we have x m which is equal to 0.52 equal to equal to 1 k delta divided by 1 plus k delta. Therefore, this equation defines what is the value of k delta. What is the value of k delta? Can we calculate? I have calculated that and found k delta values to be. Okay. So, if you put all the numbers, you get 0 0.52 divided by 1 minus of 0 0.52 equal to k e we do not know this and then it is 25000 e 1 45000 is e 2. Okay. So, that this gives you a k value of 1.97 this is what we get. So, that means if you choose a temperature choose so choose temp t of reactor reactor so that equilibrium constant k becomes equal to 1.97. Okay. Now, how do we do this? So, we have to look at the data that we have. After all, this data is available to us. It is given to us. It is given our data for this reaction is already given so, corresponding to 1.97. We find that the temperature of the reactor must be chosen as 315 degree k. This is degree k. So, what is it that we have done? So, when implies T equal to 315 K. So, what are we saying? What we are saying is that we must operate the process in such a way, we must operate this process, which means to be able to 
operate the process corresponding to the maxima in reaction rate. That means, you want this 0 0.5 this x equal to 0 0.52 you want yes, but you want this in such a way that this process should run here at the at the highest reaction rate. That means, the the conditions to be chosen should be on the locus of maximum reaction rates, which means what? What we are saying is the following for x m equal to 0 0.52 we have shown that this capital K must take a value of 1.97 which means the temperature at which this equipment this reactor must be operated the temperature must at which this must be operated is T equal to 315. So, it is corresponding to if this is 315 then we can get 0 0.52 which means if 0 0.52 is the is the conversion at which you must uh, operate then you have to choose temperature to be 315 so as to satisfy the criteria that x m equal to k delta by 1 plus k delta. Okay. So, if that means, if you want to choose a temperature of T equal to 315, how do we get this? We get this by recognizing that this equate this you can get 315 if we satisfy the energy balance, which means what uh, the whole procedure says is that the maxima and reaction rate locus defines temperature and the energy balance defines the heat load to be handled so as to achieve this kind of operation. Okay. So, having said that let us see how we can get forward. So, now the question is that we have this reactor, we have this reactor okay. now to which feed is coming in it is it is you know and this x is given as 0 0.52 and we have said for this x to be then the t should be 315. So, what are the unknown quantities now? We know V naught, okay, but we do not know the residence time here. So, residence time tau is unknown, okay, that is 1 and similarly the amount of heat to be removed q is also unknown. Therefore, once we specify tau and q the problem is fully solved. How do we do that? To get this, we will let us look at the material balance. What does material balance tell us? Material balance tells us that input minus of output plus generation equal to accumulation and at steady state accumulation is nil. At steady state accumulation is nil. So, what is F A 0 and F A? So, we can put all these numbers here F A 0 minus of F A is simply F A 0 times 1 minus of x and what is R A? R A by definition is K 1 C A minus of K 2 C B times V equal to 0. So, we can simplify this recognizing that C A equal to C A 0 times 1 minus of x and C B equal to C B 0 plus C A 0 x and then C B 0 is 0. So, putting all the simplifications we can get this is. So, F A 0 this becomes F A 0 x okay, first term minus of K 1 C A 0 times 1 minus of x minus of K 2 C A 0 x times V equal to 0. We divide throughout becomes x minus 1 minus of x times k 1 tau minus of k 2 equal to 0. So, we can simplify this as let me write here we get x equal to x multiplied by 1 plus k 1 tau by 1 plus k 2 tau equal to k 1 tau it comes directly from here I am just collecting the coefficients of x. So, x multiplied by 1 plus k 1 tau plus is it right it is 1 minus of x 1 minus of x is it all right x just a minute minus is plus sorry ok ok fine. So, it is so we get x multiplied by 1 k 1 tau plus equal to k 1 tau ok. So, this is taken to the say plus k 1 tau, it is fine. So, this gives you x equal to k 1 tau divided by 1 plus k 1 tau plus k 
k 2 tau. Okay. Now, k 1 at 315 and k 2 at 315 k we can get from the data that is already given. Therefore, on the in this equation the only unknown is tau because k 1 at this temperature 315 and k 2 at this temperature 315 is given in the table. Therefore, you can calculate in the if, if you are given x you can calculate tau. So, putting numbers x is 0 0.52 and k 1 and k 2 at k 1 at 315 and k 2 at 315 these numbers I have calculated and then I will tell you these numbers k 1 at 315 and k 2 at 315 k 1 at 315 is 2.34 2.34 k 2 at 315 is 10.08. So, I have calculated these numbers the units are per uh, per hour all these are per hour all the data is per hour I hope let us just see k 1 k 1 is in per hour. So, all per hour okay. everything is per hour. So, you can put these numbers. So, what we get is that k 1 is 2.34 tau divided by 1 plus 2.34 tau plus 10.8 tau. So, if you solve this we get tau equal to 0 0.11 per hour. Okay. So, this is material balance. What we have done? See what we have done is we have this is our problem. Our problem is that we have a stirred tank okay, where this exit conversion is specified. It is also said we must operate along the locus of maximum reaction rates, which means that we should have x m by 1 minus x m satisfying this relationship. So, putting the value of x m which is specified as 0.52 we can get k delta. Delta is also known because e delta is e 1 and e 2s are known therefore, k 1. Therefore, all the numbers are known and on that basis from the material balance which is which is given by this equation we can find out the residence time provided others are known. In this case others are known that gives you a residence time of 0.11 hour. So, our problem now is that the residence time tau is known in this tau is tau is equal to this is known. So, flow rates are known all these are known x is known here. So, only unknown quantity now is how much heat to be added or removed to maintain the temperature here as 315 degrees C 315 degrees K. Okay. So, how do you do this? Now, we look at the energy balance and see what the energy balance says as far as maintaining this kind of temperature. So, what is the energy balance saying for a stirred energy balance for a stirred tank because this is a stirred tank. So, we write the equation that we know okay, d t d t equal to v naught C p times T naught minus of T plus R 1 minus of R 2 times minus of delta H 1 star times V plus Q minus of W s. Okay. So, in this case steady state therefore, steady state therefore, this goes to 0. So, R 1 minus of R 2. So, everything is known here excepting Q. So, if you put all our numbers let us do those numbers. So, it is 0 equal to 0 0.6 uh, this is cubic meters per hour C p is 1000 and this is 40 minus of 42 T naught is given as 40 is that right. T naught is given as 40 okay. and then uh, R 1 minus of R 2 R 1 minus of R 2 this from our material balance we know it is simply F A 0 times x I will not show this now. So, it is simply F A 0 F A 0 is what C 0 which is 0 0.6 C 0 is. So, this is simply F A 0 times x times minus delta H 1 star times V okay, plus Q. Okay. Now, what is V reactor volume reactor volume is equal to volumetric flow rate times residence time volumetric flow rate is given as uh, 0 0.6 and then residence time we have calculated as 0 0.1. So, this becomes 0 0.6 cubic meters per hour is that clear. So, we have got volume reactor volume to be 0 0.6 cubic meters not to not per hour 0 0.6 cubic meters okay, this is 0 0.6 
point zero six not two six points point zero six sorry this is equal to point zero six okay cubic meter. So, we can put this in here and then uh, the only unknown here is q. We can put all the numbers, I put most of the numbers. So, let us say this is point, point 0.6 times 1.66 times 0.52 times plus 20,000 okay, plus 20,000 and then point 0.52, point 5, 2 is also to be put here okay. and uh, so essentially what we are saying is that r 1 minus r 2 times v is f a 0 x therefore this is not there it's plus q. So, this gives us a value of q equal to minus of 3158 k cal per hour and what does minus sign mean in the first law convention minus sign means the heat is going out of the system. Heat input is, is taken as positive in first law, the heat output is therefore, the negative sign means so much of heat will have to be removed. So, as to be able to maintain the temperature of 315 degree C. So, the most important thing here is that we have been able to specify what is the temperature at which we must operate. So, that we get uh, conditions corresponding to the maxima and reaction rates. Having done this, there are a few simple calculations we can do after all you know the design will require you to specify things properly. So, if q is equal to minus of 3158 kilo cal per hour. Okay. So, what is the surface area heat transfer area we have to give. So, the heat transfer area is what h a times delta t equal to q, q is given therefore, a equal to q divided by h delta t correct q is 31 5 8 h is 1000. Okay. What is delta t? Our delta t is temperature is 315, 315 which is uh, 270 and then uh, 315 means 42. So, it is delta t is 42 minus of 10 okay. that is equal to 0.26 square meters. Okay. This is given this we have found out as 315 k and this temperature is given as as 10 c. So, I have that is how it becomes what it is. Okay. So, we have uh, been able to calculate what is the heat load and what is the heat transfer area. Now, the second related question in, in all these is to be able to see whether the process that we are running will be stable or unstable. Or in other words, we must check for the stability of our process for for various kinds of disturbances you see so that is what we would like to do now check how stable is our uh, is our steady state so to be able to do this uh, what is called as steady state stability uh, steady state stability what we try to do is we try to plot we try to plot what is called as ug and ur what is ug and ur ug is heat generation and ur is heat removal and our steady state our steady state is about the the equality of heat generation and heat removal when they are equal we know that the process is is at steady state we can plot these curves u r we can just write down what is u r and u s something we have done before but it's not not a very complicated thing anyway so u r u r s u g s is r 1 s minus of r 2 s multiplied by tau and j 1 okay. and then it is we can show this is no point in doing it once again. If we know that r 1 s minus of r 2 s is equal to C a 0 x s divided by j. I will not show this because we have already done this before. Therefore, u g s equal to C a 0 x s times j which is equal to C a 0 
k 1 s tau tau divided by j 1 1 plus k 1 s tau plus k 2 s tau. You see these things we have derived before therefore, we are not doing it again. Notice here that if you want to plot u g s all that you need to know is what is the temperature corresponding to this excess or in other words you want to plot u g s if on the right hand side k 1 s is a function of temperature and k 1 s we know k 1 is what some k 1 0 e to the power of minus of e 1 by r t and therefore, since the right hand side is fully known k 1 is known therefore, you can plot u g as a function of temperature. Okay. Similarly, what is u r our u r by the u r s equal to 1 plus beta we have done all these things therefore, I am not doing it again T s minus of T c star okay, where T c star equal to T naught plus beta T c divided by 1 plus beta. So, all these we have done where beta is equal to H a by V naught C p all this is known. So, what we are saying is that we can now plot u g versus temperature, we can now plot u r versus temperature. Okay. Therefore, the points at which they intersect are the, are the points at which steady state occurs. So, this is what we are trying to say and you can plot this. How do we plot this? I just show you how to plot this. They are not difficult to do, but I just do some calculations to illustrate how this plotting is to be done. See, let us say T and uh, k 1 say k 2. So, k 1 tau k 2 tau okay, x s u g s and u r s. What is u g s? C s 0 x s j 1. What is u r s? 1 plus beta times T s minus of T c star. Okay and all these are known. Okay. So, I will just put some say 293, I will just 2 1 or 2, 293, 303, 315 and 323. I am just calculating some numbers. See, if you put all these calculations, you can find at 3 not 293, this turns out to be 3.32 minus 15.6 and then uh, that is 293. 303 is 9.96 minus 1.29, then this is 17.2, comes out to be 15.9, and then 26.1 and 41.6. In other words, what we are saying is that you can now plot, see this data here, you can see here this data, got this data here. UGS, you can plot UGS versus temperature, okay, and then URS, you can plot UGS versus temperature. This curve looks something like this, and then URS versus temperature, it's like this, and this is the point of intersection, which is 315. So, what we have tried to say here is the following if you have a stirred tank, okay, in which an exothermic reaction is taking place and then you have to operate this process at the maximum reaction rate, which means it specifies the temperature at which you should operate and so on. Now, you can also understand this steady state by plotting u g s, this is u g s okay, or u r s, this is u r s. Okay. Or in other words, the point at which the intersection takes place is the point of steady state. So, we can understand steady state in various ways. Okay. This is another way of understanding steady state. Our interest now is now that we know it is uh, there is one po point of intersection, how stable is this steady state? Is it stable? Is it unstable? Now, to understand stability of steady states, we have done this already. I okay. will just quickly run through this procedure for understanding steady stability of steady state. We have shown in an earlier discussion that, that an exothermic stern tank stability can be understood in terms of three numbers L, M and N, where L is defined as 1 minus tau by C A 0, del by del x 
of R 1 minus of R 2 m is equal to 1 plus beta okay, where beta is h a by v naught c p okay, and then uh, n is equal to j 1 tau within brackets del r 1 minus of r 2 divided by del t at steady state. Okay. And stability is L plus m greater than n L m greater than n. So, steady state is stable, steady state is stable if these two criteria are satisfied. So, what is L m and n? These are all numbers which is determined by what is given here, where residence time here is known, C A 0 is known, R 1 minus of R 2 at S, all these are known. So, for a given reaction kinetics, L m and n is fully specified. So, what we want to do now is to illustrate to you how we can actually calculate L m and n for the specific problem that we have in front of us. I want to calculate this in front of you. So, let me go through this whole thing quickly. So, R 1 minus of R 2. For example, for us to calculate L m and n, we should know R 1 minus of R 2, so that we can differentiate with respect to x and t and find out the value of these numbers at steady state. That is what I am trying to do now. R 1 minus of R 2 is k 1 c a 0 1 minus of x minus of k 2 c a 0 x. Okay. So, del R 1 minus of del x equal to k 1 s with a minus sign okay, minus k 2 k 2 s multiplied by c a 0. It is obvious from here. Okay. So, that is equal to minus of k 1 s plus k 2 s times c a 0. Therefore, what is L? L we have to calculate L here, we want to calculate L because tau is known, everything else is known. So, let us calculate L. So, L is equal to 1 plus tau by c a 0 within brackets of k 1 s plus k 2 s or this is equal to uh, multiple c a 0 is there equal to uh, 1 plus k 1 s tau plus k 2 s tau. So, k 1 s is known, k 2 s is known, tau is known, therefore, L can be calculated. So, will I put numbers, if I put these numbers, this becomes 1 plus 21.3 times 0 0.11 plus 10.08 into 0 0.11 it's a, that's equal to 4.45 okay the value of l for this particular problem uh, where tau is 0 0.11 per hour k1 and all that we have calculated l is 4.45 okay now we have to calculate m what is m m we said m is equal to 1 plus beta which is 1 plus uh, h a by v naught c p. Okay, that is equal to 1 plus h is let me just put these numbers here calculated it here somewhere else h is 1000 and we have calculated this uh, area just now we calculate area as 0.24 square meters divided by v naught c p v naught is 0 0.6 and C p is 1000 kilo calories per cubic meter per degree C and so on. Okay, that comes out to be 0.43. So, L please notice here m is this. Now, we have to calculate n. This is j 1. Okay, how to calculate n? n equal to j 1 tau del by del t of R 1 minus of R 2 at S. So, when you do this differentiation, this becomes n equal to j 1 
tau del by del t becomes k 1 s e 1 c a 0 times 1 minus of x okay, divided by r t s squared that is 1 and the other side is k 2 e 2 c a 0 x s divided by r t s squared. Okay. Now, once again all these are known. So, we can calculate this, we can put all the numbers, I will just put all the numbers here j 1. Notice here that j 1 by definition is minus of delta h divided by C p, okay, volumetric specific heat. I am putting all the numbers here and then when you do that, it turns out to be 0 0.03. I put all the numbers here, this whole calculation turns out to be 0 0.03. Now, our steady state stability criteria our criteria for stability is L plus m greater than n. The value of n is 0 0.03, please guess n is 0 0.03 and L value we calculated as L is 4.45 and so let me let me put all the numbers together in front of you. We get L plus m. So, L let me summarize here L equal to 4.45, m equal to m is 0.43 n equal to 0 0.03. So, L plus m greater than n, L m greater than n. We can see here both the criteria, both the criteria are satisfied, are satisfied, which means, which means what? Which means that the, the steady state, the steady state that we have chosen steady state is stable. By stability what we mean is what we mean is that to a disturbance the steady state would re return to its original uh, state because of the after the disturbance. By, by, by this criteria what we really mean is that, that uh, after disturbance it will take time to reach the steady state, but it will reach that old steady state. That is the point this is meant by this satisfying of these two criteria. Okay. Now, the question is that uh, the, this whole, this whole uh, analysis is based on what is called as uh, small deviations from steady state, which means that we our disturbance should not be so large that the linear approximation that we have assumed in this steady state analysis sh that should not be violated. So, small disturbances these are all correct, but if the disturbances are very large then clearly our, uh, our approximations in the analysis are not satisfactory there were alternative techniques would be required. I will stop there. Thank you very much. <laughs>